what's up dudes chooch back with another one today i'm gonna be doing a little bit of a different style video this is gonna be a full on compilation of just different clips of riding different unicycles and i'm gonna actually tell you about each clip and kind of describe it quickly and what's going on in it um so let's keep rolling with it. this is the king song s22 right here um, i'm riding at a place called valmont bike park it is a really, really fun little track in Boulder, Colorado, and a um, great place to, you know, enhance your skills and ride. This is a clip right here from Shredfest. Guy had a cool setup in his car for storing unicycles and charging them with its hybrid. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Rode through uh, Chick-fil-A right here on the InMotion V12 high torque. Just a little lunch cruise up to uh, Superior. Um, that was down the 36 bike path that I took and then um, went through the drive-through. Uh, they got actually mad at me at Chick-fil-A for going through the drive-through um, when the manager was there. Like, uh, they just said it was a, a liability, so they uh, stopped letting me do it. Um, I went there one night after nine o'clock, you know how they closed the inside of the place? And they wouldn't let me ride, uh, or they wouldn't let me ride through the drive-through. So, just to keep that in mind. Some places won't let you do it. Uh, this right here is the Beagoat EXN. This is the original one, that last clip, and I was just riding uh, um, around on the original one. The Shinko 244 tire. This right here is the InMotion V12 High Torque. And this is riding um, above me is US 36 right here. And, I'm just letting the car behind me know I'm slowing down and getting off to the side of the road here. Um, just some technical stuff that's good to know, being able to stop and, you know, use your hand signals, guys. Uh, let others know what you're doing. That's one big thing with these unicycles, guys, is people don't know what you're doing. You don't have any indicator of what your next move is because with a car, you can see where the person's, uh, you know, you can kind of see their... Uh, arms tense up and then start to move the steering wheel so you can see an anticipation of their next move. With unicycles you can't judge it. It's such a quick thing and it's no, nothing there to show your next move. And um, there's a lot more in depth to that and explaining what I mean but uh, most people understand what I'm talking about. And so just use your hand signals guys. Be really really um, out there with them. You know like especially when you're in the road and all that you know use People don't really understand motorcycle hand signals and you have both hands free on the unicycles, guys. Like literally, if you do the normal motorcycle hand signals, like uh, I, you have to know them to get your motorcycle um, validation where you essentially, um, with your right hand, you don't use your right hand because your right hand's gonna be on the throttle. So with your left hand, you put it up or either you point out to the side. You know, if you're doing a right hand turn, you kind of put your hand up in the air um, and then if you're doing a left hand turn, you actually point left. With unicycles, what I want you to do, guys, is I want you to just go ahead and abruptly point with both hands to which way you're going to be turning. That way there's no confusion for anybody that might not know uh, motorcycle hand signals. And there's a lot of people out there, especially the new you know, millennials, Gen Zers, that have no clue what the hell motorcycle signals are. And if you go putting your hand up in the air, uh, they don't know that's a right turn. So with unicycles, you have both hands free. Point with both hands which way you're going, if you can do it. Um, I got the selfie stick in a lot of the, these videos, so I, I can't do it. But at least let people know your next move. You know, when you're slowing down, put your palms down, you know, flash them. Be, make your own signals up that you know it's going to be universally known. Like, basically, if you're going to stop, put your hands down behind you and like flash them like behind you like hey I'm stopping I'm stopping I'm stopping I'm stopping you know and let people know and then when you're crossing the street make eye contact with everybody in the cars make sure that they see you make eye contact with them first they might not see you, your eyes through the goggles but make sure you see their eyeballs look at you and make sure they're not on the phone because if they're on the phone they're going to press the accelerator and you might be going to go across the street and if they didn't make eye contact with you and they're looking at their phone and they press the accelerator, it's going to be too late. They're going to hit you. So little things like that, you got to know. And that all came from riding motorcycles before the unicycles, guys. I rode um, enduro cross and I rode, um, I rode, I had my um, 
a moped guys at 12 years old and I had a 150 cc moped it was a Kimco 150 cc would go about 76 miles an hour with it you know, I, at 12 years old I had it and I'd ride it to middle school I'm not even kidding you I got in trouble the first day I rode it to middle school because um, I, they didn't think that I had my endorsements they didn't think I was allowed to do it so the principal wouldn't let me ride it home and um, my dad had to come up there and be like, yeah, you're good to go ride it and all that stuff. And uh, I had to push it off the property the first day of the middle school because they wouldn't let me ride it home. And then it was hilarious. Think about middle school guys riding a motorcycle to school and having your helmet walk through the hallways or whatever. And it was a legit motorcycle because it was a 150cc moped. And uh, I just took the, the sticker off the side of it. It just said 150. Nobody knew. In South Carolina, everybody down there has mopeds. And uh, you don't have to have them registered down there. So I was I was literally riding, man. I'd commute between my mom and my dad's house. It was like 45 minutes. And I rode that back and forth all the time. So that's when I started riding. Uh, or I started riding at age three on motorcycles, actually. And then I started riding, got the, the moped at age 12. But um, now this right here, that right there, this is a shred fest. That's actually Shibby right there. That's Mike Shibby. If you've seen the jump videos and stuff, um, this was shred fest, and um, this is actually in the main race, guys. You can see the struggle on this EXN. The EXN guys, the original one, just has no torque coming out of corners. That right there is actually the RS high torque where Kevin just stumbled right there. So that was. You saw a shibby that went down and crashed, and then that was Kevin I passed right there. And I wasn't going fast, but it just shows in races, if you're smooth and consistent, um, you can really uh, make progress. He got me in that next part right there where you saw him pass me. That was just riding up and by Yellowstone Lake on the V12. V12 is really waterproof, guys, and that was not salt water. So um, if it's not salt water, guys, uh, these things are, are quite waterproof. You know, you just want to be, you want to be smart with it. You know, you don't want to be an idiot. Like if I were to crash right there, obviously, if it fell over the water sideways and washed all the way over the battery, you probably wouldn't be good for it. You know, you'd have to grab it quick. But I've had an electric unicycle, guys. I had a 9 by one e plus. I've been riding since 2015. Um, you know, one E plus guys this right here I'll get back to that in a second I'm going about 60 miles an hour on the V set right here on the V set scooter this is pretty wild guys this is coming down Boulder Canyon and look at that I'm getting speed wobbles on this thing and I'm literally going about 60 miles an hour on a V set it's because this is a steep canyon right here like it is very steep grade you can see the water rushing to my side right here and I had it pinned. I had it literally the V-Set 10 plus completely pinned out and I was going about 54 to 60 miles an hour right here. Um, just absolutely flying on the speed. And that thing is ridiculous. It is so fast and it's a ton of fun. Um, if you're interested in one of those scooters, use the code CHOOCH50, all lowercase, all together, CHOOCH50 at RevRides and it saves you um, money on any scooter or any electric unicycle. Just throwing that out there. But uh, back to what I was saying about the 9 by one e Plus. Uh, I've been riding since 2015. I had the one e Plus, guys. And that thing fell in Cherry Creek, uh, the creek that runs through Denver. And they were flooding that creek. They do it every year to wash all the debris and stuff down. And they flood that creek one time in like one day just to wash everything down into the river and cleans it out and all that. But it comes up over the bike path, like on the side of the river in some spots. And so it's deep and they tell you, you know, go around it, don't go under that part, don't go through that part. Some bicyclists do. And I saw one guy ride through it in front of me. So I was like, all right, well I can probably get through it on the unicycle. I rode off the edge. I couldn't see the bottom, mind you, the water's murky. And I rode off the bike path where it drops off into like the rip, uh, rip rap or what do you call it, or the rocks that go around the, rip, the river bed. And it dropped off, dude, like th three to four feet, you know. And the unicycle completely just came out from under me. And it floated down the river while it was rushing because they just flooded it. And the unicycle literally, the 9.1 E-plus was floating 
because the, the power pads on the side were like foam and they had like an air pocket in them. And this thing literally floated down the damn creek. It was just, just cruising, dude. It was just floating down the creek. I thought it was completely done for. I was like, dude, my day was ruined. I, I felt like such an idiot and I just jumped in, dude. Like I had just gotten out of class um, from going to community college back then. And I literally just jumped in the river. I had my khakis on, I jumped in the river and I had soaked, just soaked my pants all the way up. Dude, I grabbed that thing out, put it down, and I rode it. As soon as I put it back on the ground, like one side of it was completely um, dry because it was like floating down the river held up by the power pad on one side. And I popped it on the ground with water just gushing out of it and hit the power button, and it turned on, and I rode it all the way back home after it floated down the creek with no problem. So... And I've never had one mess up because of water. And I've rode them through creeks, rain, all kind of stuff. Like I've had, I've popped motherboards from jumping it and like landed too hard back in the day. But um, I've never had one mess up because of water ever. And I've had many unicycles. So that should probably be like one of the least of your worries. Be smart with it. Don't get it in like the buttons. Don't ride it like all day in the rain and stuff. But if you just got to splash through a puddle or splash through a creek real quick, you'll be good to go. And this right here is riding up in, um, this is near Frisco, Colorado right here. So up near Lake Dillon, um, there's a really good bike path system in Colorado. This is the Colorado high country right here. Um, during the summer, it's nice like this and the bike paths are open and all, but most of the winter time all this is just covered completely covered in snow um, and it usually doesn't thaw out until the summer rolls in so it's really nice during the summertime to come up here but you got to enjoy it in the summertime because um, as soon as winter rolls in man this is where Breckenridge is this is where all the big ski resorts are like right down the road from me is like Vail uh, you got like I said Breckenridge Copper Mountain and all those kind of local ski resorts keystone right around the corner from where this is so coming up here during the middle of the summer is amazing guys because it's the weather is so nice like this was in the middle of the summer where if you're down in denver so denver's about an hour and 20 minute drive from where i am right here and it's about so if it's 90 degrees in Denver, it can be like 65 up here, 70 degrees up here. It just depends on the day. And then, and the nights, guys, it gets to like, during the summer, whenever you know it doesn't drop below like 70 degrees on most summer nights in, in the United States, most places, it gets down into the 40s up there in the summer like time at night. And if you're like me where you like sleeping when it's cold, man, it's amazing when you're like every night of the summer is just hot as hell and then you go up there and you can crack a window open and it's just like 40 degrees and that breeze is rolling in it's so nice dude it's so nice i love it up there absolutely love it up there but um, that's a really good spot to check out this is at shred fest where i was trying a, a one wheel out i'm i'm pretty like i don't know I like the one wheels guys and they're 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 cool and I, I wish I had more time to like fool around on them and learn how to ride one actually um, if I got one I feel like I could uh, get it down really good and I think it'd be fun to have one but I I'm definitely I think EUCs are you get way more bang for your buck and it just makes sense the way you ride it um, even as a snowboarder like I'm an avid snowboarder uh, and I know EUC is a lot more like skiing than snowboarding, and one wheel is arguably more like, you know, snowboarding than skiing. So you'd think as a snowboarder I'd like one wheels, but it's just not the case. Even though I, I love snowboarding, and that's like my favorite thing to do in the wintertime, um, I just, I, I don't know, man. It, I like the EUC so much. Now, I feel like since I've been riding EUC so long, I really need to try skiing. Um, I've been ski yeah, or I've been snowboarding look. since I was, this, yeah, let's What's see, that, since I was about it. seven years old. And I skied thing. up until then. And I've never been on a pair of skis since then. I've never tried, like, because I'm not going to go 
to a resort and rent like ski boots when I have all my snowboard equipment. You know, once you have your own boots and your own board and all that, you don't want to go rent just a pair of nasty old ski boots and put them on. You know, so I've just never ever gone back to it. But um, I feel like if I got a good pair of ski boots, good bindings, and like a good pair of skis um, that were the right length, that felt like riding an electric unicycle, I feel like I could just shred. I really do. I feel like it'd be no problem to just hop on those. And it's literally the same movements, guys. Like skiing and electric unicycling, man, I really think you'll see skiers pick up this hobby just so you can it helps your leg muscles man that's one thing i've noticed a lot is it really helps um keep your leg muscles in touch throughout the summer because one big thing with that you can you can get injuries in like winter sports like snowboarding and skiing just because people don't have their muscles built up for it and so they go out on the mountain and you hit a few bumps coming down and your your muscles and your legs aren't used to that and they just buckle and then that's when you get torn ligaments and you get fractures and you get problems is because your your muscles just buckle under that force but if you're doing stuff like this throughout the summertime and you're doing this on the norm right here it just keeps those muscles in check to where they're not going to buckle on you you know whenever you need them and I've had it happen, man, several times snowboard where I've hit like a big unexpected divot or something. Um, that usually my, my legs would have just given out on me, and I know they would have. But because I, I do this all the time during the, you know, during the summer months, uh, it just keeps, it keeps your, your muscles um, from fatiguing fast and it keeps them to where they're not gonna give out on you under stress. So it's a, a lot of benefits to this with um, it transferred to other hobbies and, uh, and other sports for sure. This right here is the veteran Sherman that I'm riding on. Uh, I got this outfitted as kind of my adventure wheel. I got a little um, little advent little bag on the back with like my essentials in there. That's like a little uh, Max Maxpedition barnacle bag. The fender I made on that thing is a just a normal dirt bike fender, and I wrapped it in flex tape and just fabric I found around the house. That, Put it on there and then suspended it with a random lanyard I found. So I literally completely just made that fender, just Frankenstein it on there, and it turned out pretty cool actually. Um, but I got the side side pads on there. You can get a discount on those. Those orange jump pads you see right here um, in the, the description below. And um, I really like them. Those these are the side pad governors. I'm pretty sure. There's a lot of different ones. I have like three different pairs of these side pads, but they're called the side pads. S A I. They're linked below, and there's a 10% discount um, if you use that link on all these pads. The Governor XLs are the best ones, and they really help with your Achilles uh, tendon. This is a shred fest or an open practice. Where, uh, dude, absolutely took me out, destroyed me. I really pissed me off right there because we weren't even racing it was just open practice but um yeah this is the sherman right here this is going up four mile canyon in boulder this is the um, original veteran sherman right here so they have the sherman max out now and i have the original veteran sherman still and i've just used this wheel uh mainly for my long range cruising my easy long range cruising I haven't really jumped this thing. I haven't really taken this on like extremely hard trail rides. Like if it's a smooth trail with just some rollers on it, you know, no roots, no rocks, anything like that, I'll take it on it. But uh, the veteran Sherman's a heavy wheel. It's a stable wheel at, at high speeds. Like you can ride this thing at 51 miles an hour and it just is super stable and just cruises, cruises like a, you know, like a, a Harley Davidson, you know, this thing rides very good. Um, so I'm just cruising through the mountains on the veteran Sherman right here. Always be aware of your surroundings like that. You see, you got a car behind you or something like that. Always be aware and be courteous. One thing about electric unicycles is you can be more courteous than a bicycle because 
if I was riding a bicycle up this hill right here, I wouldn't want to necessarily pull over, you know, like that and lose momentum, whatever it may be. But with this, you know, if you got to pull all the way off to the side of the road to let somebody by, just do it, you know. You can hop right back on the road and continue on your way. It's not like you got to, you know, start back pedaling or anything like that. Just somebody behind you can move over, get out of the way, let them go by. No big deal to it, really. So just be aware. I used to run a, uh, a mirror. A lot of people do. Um, I think running a mirror on your helmet um, can be beneficial if you're predominantly you know, a street rider. Um, but I think the ideal mirror setup is the ones that people are running on the back of their wrist. They'll set them up on the back of their wrist guards and it's just a, um, you know, a, a convex mirror where it's, um, it's kind of rounded so you've got a wide field of view on it and you can just hold your wrist up to see exactly what's behind you. And that's, I think that's a way better setup than running like a little mirror on your helmet that's always there. Because it just gets in the way, you know. If you got a, a compact mirror on the back of your wrist where you can just flash it up, it's on the back of your gloves, wrist guard, however you set it up. You know, you can just you can even Velcro it onto the sleeve of your jacket or anything like that. You know, just be creative. But I think that the best mirror setup I've seen after riding these things since 2015 is by far just a convex mirror on the back of the wrist. Flash that baby up, see everything behind you, and keep going on your way. So, um, I don't think it's necessary though, if you're okay with looking over your shoulder like I'm doing right here, every now and then, just to make sure you're not holding traffic up, and nobody's behind you pissed off, you know, wanting to get by, I think that's, you know, reasonable to do, but you do have to, you know, use your corners and look over your shoulder when you get a chance to, and, and, uh, just keep that in mind when you're riding because you don't want to be holding traffic up um, if you're riding this. When it's so easy and so compact just to get out of the way whenever, whenever is needed, you know. So that's one, one great thing about these. You can literally ride in that little tiny space between the, the white line and the side of the road if you need to do it. So as soon as somebody comes up, just hop all the way over to the side or either just pull over and let them by. Now this right here is the V12 High Torque, doing a little bit of trail riding. This is um, on the other side of Summit County. This is over near Keystone. This is on like the back side of uh, the Keystone Resort. Um, not really much over here. There's no hotels, no buildings or anything. These trails are, uh, this connects to a bunch of really good dirt bike trails up here. And they're only open like three months out of the entire year again just because of all the snow up here. And they're also conservative about it. Like I literally wanted to ride the trails one day. It was dirt bike trails, so I knew I could ride this on it, but then the trails were closed. And it was like like 10 days until they opened up. So um, They're open right now though. They're open till the end of October. Um, there are all these dirt bike trails up there on the backside of Keystone. They're really nice actually. And I don't, it, it, I didn't see any dirt bikes the whole time I was up there. I saw like one dirt bike on the access road, and um, when I actually was in the trails, I had them all to myself basically. So I wasn't like afraid of getting smoked by a, <laughs> a dirt bike or four wheeler or something like that, you know. But if I had heard a bunch of them out there, I probably would have definitely not rode those trails. But they were nice. A lot of them were kind of rutted out in some places, but uh, they were fun. Um, actually, I don't even know. I can't find the SD card I had. I literally think I lost the SD card of riding those trails. Because you got to think, like, keep in mind, when I go out on these rides, I'm like having to switch SD cards, like out in the middle of nowhere. Like, sometimes I got my gloves on and I'm just like trying to put all my stuff on top of the unicycle and switch SD cards and like put them, I usually put them in like the zip pocket of my wallet. And I think I lost it somehow. I don't know, dude. I've looked for that thing everywhere. I like think I'm losing my mind because <laughs> I've looked everywhere for that damn thing and I cannot find it. But ever cool. Take my word for it. On the back side of Keystone, some great, great trails. Now this right here is the V12 High Torque. This is a great, um, it just shows that the, the torque on this thing and what it's for really it's great for like acceleration out of your corners 
um, if you got any uh, elevation out of your corners or anything like that, like little uphills out of a like a mountain bike type corner, this is what the high torque excels at. Um, it's unique in its nature, guys. It definitely Pretty you can definitely the tell the high torque is it does its job. It's it's impressive um, on trails, but anywhere else you're not going to notice the difference in the high torque and the high speed unless you're you're riding trails and especially like mountain trails. The, the high speed just it doesn't take off out of the corners like this corner for example right here the high speed you'd be like on your toes like wiggling a little bit when the high torque just goes up with no problem it just you know the high torque is just so smooth through trails with elevation gain and it, it, it it's it's luxury dude i love the in motion v12 high torque like right now i'm in transition between moving houses so I'm actually back at my old condo right now because I have internet here. I'm waiting on my Starlink to come in um, so I can, because I have, like, the, the internet I have at the at the current house that I just moved to is through uh, T-Mobile, and it's basically like a wireless hotspot. And my upload speed there, I shit you not, dude, the last video I uploaded took 26 hours to upload and I just stuck through it, dude, and it, it failed like four times, but it took 26 hours to upload the damn video. So I immediately was like, dude, well, I gotta bite the bullet and buy Starlink. So I just went ahead and bought Starlink. And um, I was on the waiting list forever, dude. I was literally on the waiting list forever for Starlink, just because I knew I was gonna be moving. Um, and I knew it, there was a waiting list for it. And um, I ended up canceling my order for the like the residential Starlink, and then I just got the RV Starlink, and they shipped it out in two days. Um, and it's, it's it'll be here soon, so I'll be hooked up with the internet at the new place and be able to make some fresh content for you guys. And dude, the riding is going to be amazing, man, at the, at the new place. Like it's just beautiful, beautiful setting. Like it. It, it's going to be just stellar, stellar rides, man. It, it's going to be breathtaking. But um, And making the new track and building all that stuff is going to be so much fun, man. Like, I've already started and just, I'm having a blast with it, man. Like, you know, just pickaxing the trails and getting the equipment to do it and everything. It's, it's really fun. I'm having a good time with it. So, um, I can't wait to have something similar to like to this trail right here in my own backyard it's gonna be so much fun i cannot wait but if y'all enjoyed this type of video i know with the short attention span now you know like short you know minute long videos and the shorts and all that is great but i figured if you compile them all together and just you know talk about each one of them you can make a long video and make it entertaining for people to watch that have a short attention span now like myself so Y'all enjoy the video, throw the thumbs up, and I'll see you dudes in the next one.